as a young person, this is where it starts, isn't it? The silence is broken. The country has brought the courage to speak it. Fred spoke them, he brought the courage and the tears to speak. Why? Because Justice Sinclair gave us the permission this morning, right? He says, no worries, you go ahead, shed those tears. Tell the story, tell the truth. And what that does for us younger people, if I can place myself in that position, is Eugene, you help open up the space for us, Bill, Fred, all of you. That idea of working on ourselves first, Myrna, that you were describing, Doing the hard work because it isn't easy to face up to it. How do communities reconcile? Well, it begins with each and every one of us. How fortunate am I as a young man to have spent time with my late grandmother? I held her hand. She was 87 years old, still here. During that apology, she said, Grandson, they're just starting to see us. They're just beginning to see us. That's what she said. And she found that encouraging because it's the first step actually seeing one another, having the silence broken and the story starting to be told. She, I, like, I always like to remind myself, she was a tiny woman, but she outlived three husbands and raised 17 kids. This, this is the women in our nations and our territories. Resilience have come through. went to residential school and like was just told here I'm so thankful because I get the opportunity to have these discussions with my parents with mom and dad I sat down with my dad just uh, just a week or so ago and he said uh, he told me a story about getting ready to leave residential school getting ready to leave uh, one year he, he was a teenager and the way he put it he says well I I couldn't understand why my great grandmother was uh, was saying the phrase that she was. We've got a few fellow Nichon speakers here who will know that what she said was, grandson, remember me. Grandson, remember the essence of who you are and where you come from. Thinking about just the Sinclair, the work for the child taken and for the parent left behind. How tough it must have been for that great grandmother, my great great grandmother that I remember so well, because I used to spend time with her. Remember the essence of who you are, grandson. She said that to my father. He's 73, and I get to have these discussions for the first time in my own family. That hard work is happening. Tears are being shed. I think that's where it begins, isn't it? Between us as individuals, sharing the stories from so many different perspectives so that we can understand. It's an important perspective that only by being truly inclusive, this work of truth and reconciliation, that we must continue to support the, the, the commissioners and their work. And we invite all Canadians, we invite our relatives and all First Nations to be involved in this important work. It is not easy. It is difficult work that we're undertaking here today, and all of us with our own stories to tell. We need to advance reconciliation between First Nations and, and the rest of the country. And that work is going on. We have representatives from all sectors of Canadian society. And today, more Canadians are joining the, the discussion. How great was it to see those kids here, to hear the stories about this being taught in the schools up north, it's becoming mandatory curriculum. And those kids were here listening to you. I was so encouraging, encouraged by their presence. A young man by the name of Drew. Philip Moran, a young man who's written a rap song. He's written a rap song for you survivors. Maybe you don't all like rap music. But be assured that the young people are paying attention increasingly. I reminded them, you're not the leaders of tomorrow like you're told so often. You're the leaders of right now. Yes. Reach out to your elders. in our roles, my role currently in, in the role of National Chief at the Assembly of First Nations to work with the leadership of the Inuit and the Métis. We need to ensure that we tell the truth, 
that the real work of reconciliation, the ancestors had already put that vision before us. In some cases, as long as 267 years ago, they made treaties. They made treaties throughout this country that it was about mutual respect, mutual recognition, that we would share in the wealth and resources of the land, that we would eradicate the poverty that's already been mentioned here, that we would have fairness in education. If for seven generations these schools sought to take away our language, our culture, our sense of identity, our connection with our treaties, our rights, should not education be the tool of freedom and reconnection for our people? Reconnect us with our language, our heritage, our culture, our family, our territories. It is, is it also not the tool to reconcile the relationships between First Nations and the rest of Canada? We absolutely join the call for governments. Give life and put action to the words of reconciliation, to the apology that was offered up that my late grandmother heard back in 2008. Honor the spirit and intent of the treaties. Implement the rights that First Nations and the ancestors of the newcomers forged together. That we would live together in peace and friendship. That we would find a sense of harmony. And that we would have a place that where real healing and reconciling is going on in our lives. Proper health supports for all those survivors. Proper health supports for our people. I want to conclude on this one notion that I'll, I'll always have in my heart. Ten-year-old by the name of Jaden. Northern isolated First Nations community. Living in a 12 by 13 foot one room home with no electricity, no running water, and sloth nails out the front door. It's 2012. This is one of the richest countries in the world. Canada has been well regarded as a champion of human rights, building homes in South America, deploying clean drinking water in Africa. None of us in this group, no one political strike, created what we are currently dealing with here today. No one of us wrote the Indian Act or opened up the doors of the residential schools when they first opened. But we can all share, as my late grandmother reminded me, every single one of us is responsible for overcoming this terrible chapter in our collective history. But we can do this, people. We can do this in our lifetimes, as the former National Chief said. I, as well, believe in reconciliation. So let us grasp this moment and be bold and have a major lurch forward, especially for the children. To the survivors, we'll continue to stand with you every step of the way. Thank you for your resilience. Thank you for your courage. Thank you very much for leading the way for us younger people. We will step in as the, as the uh, chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Called on the, the second generation, that's me. It's time for us to pick up our responsibilities as well. We've come a long ways, but we have still a long ways to go. But I am confident that we can get there. We can get there, as my late grandmother said, by working together. We are stronger together. First Nations, strong First Nations will make a stronger country. Thank you very much.